Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. We'll give everyone a few minutes to hop on and get ready for our webinar today. If you would like, I always think it's fun to, when we get started, hop on and write where you're joining us from in the chat so I can go ahead and go first. There you go. Wow, so we have Minnesota, Oklahoma, California, Ontario, Texas, DC, New York, Massachusetts. Wow, we're coming from all over the place. That is very exciting. Yeah, we have folks from Bahrain. That's awesome. I did see somebody from Japan as well. The so awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's so great that everyone's joining us from all different parts of the world today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I think that since we're a minute after the hour, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. So hi, everyone. Thank you again for joining us today. My name is Lindsay Joseph, and I am a marketing specialist at OpenStax. And I'm joined by Arvin, Clifton, and other members of the Learner team to talk about how you can enhance student engagement using live polling and interactive lecture slides. So to begin, I think it's great to do a little overview of OpenStax. Most of you guys are probably familiar with what we do, but if you're new to OpenStax, there's a few key things you'll want to know. So OpenStax is based in Houston, Texas, as we're a part of Rice University, and we're a nonprofit organization. We're able to create and offer our free educational resources due to grants from foundations, individual donations from very eager and excited users and our mission support fees from our technology partners like Learner. So essentially anytime an instructor chooses to pair one of our free textbooks with one of our paid technology options, we get a small mission support feedback that helps to sustain our work. Next, OpenStax is mission oriented and our work is centered around transforming learning so that education works for every student. One of our main areas of work is publishing our library of free openly licensed textbooks. Since 2012, we have published over 45 textbooks in the process saving students over $1.7 billion. Now you just heard me say that OpenStax offers openly licensed resources or open education resources, but what exactly does that mean? We have an awesome definition up here on the screen from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, which is a fantastic supporter of OER. In essence, OER are any educational materials that are publicly available, are don't cause anything to use, and don't have any restrictions on them as to how users can modify the content. As I mentioned before, one of the main components of OpenStax is that we offer over 45 test textbooks in the areas of math, science, business, the humanities, the social sciences, and college success. All of our books are designed to meet the standard scope and sequence requirements of their respective courses and are written and reviewed by industry experts. Additionally, each of our books also goes through a very rigorous editorial process to ensure that the content is up to date, easy to understand, and representative of diverse audiences. Lastly, each of our books receive regular editorial updates. Instructors can submit errata updates on our website for our subject matter experts to review. And we revise our books when it's pedagogically necessary. For example, if there's a major development in a certain field, we may publish an entirely new edition of a book, but of course there's always developments going on in different areas all the time. So we make sure to update the online versions of our books fairly frequently to keep up with what's going on in the world. So overall, our textbook 
our textbooks look a lot like other textbooks that are out there on the market. However, unlike textbooks that aren't OER, our textbooks are 100% free and are available under an open license. So instructors can modify, revise, and rearrange the content any way they'd like. However, here at OpenStax, we offer much more than just textbooks. Each of our free textbooks also come with free instructor and student resources like LMS course cartridges, test banks, and lecture slides. Additionally, we also offer free webinars like this one and blogs on a variety of different topics like strategies for teaching and tips for using our resources. Another way that we help instructors is through OpenStax Tutor, which is our flagship courseware platform, and our support center, which is a great way to find the answers to any questions you may have. Lastly, we offer OpenStax Tech Scout. We know that finding digital technologies for your class is essential for teaching, but it can be very challenging and time consuming. So we've decided to streamline this process for instructors through offering a searchable tool on our website where you can look for courseware, online homework, simulations, et cetera, that align with each of our textbooks and that meet your teaching needs. And Learner is one of the technology tools that you can find on TechScout. So as part of our work to make education more affordable, we partner with learning technology companies like Learner that offer low cost, high value education technology resources. In the process, Learner helps to really enrich the OpenStax experience for all instructors and students and helps provide us with the financial support that we need to keep our books up to date and accessible for students and instructors all around the world. And going off of that, I'm going to pass it off to Learner to begin their portion of the presentation today. Thanks, Lindsay. So let me just share my screen real quick. All right, let me remove some of the stuff that's actually in the way. <laughs> okay, and... Uh, quickly click on the sh slideshow button. Okay, there you go. So thanks everybody for joining. Uh, my name is Arvind. I am the co-founder of Lona. We also have um, the other co-founder, Venkat, uh, who's also on the on the meeting. And uh, we have my colleague, uh, Clifton, who is heading customer success, and Anna, and uh, quite a few others uh, who are also part of the participants. So today we are here to talk about uh, enhancing student engagement, you know, using live polling and interactive lecture slides. So, so a quick agenda, we'll focus on a little bit about what, who we are, um, um, tell you what we do, and then follow, followed by that is uh, a brief interactive demo. So you might have received some emails that we just sent out uh, 10, 15 minutes ago. It's just a hot link. Um, so if you would like to participate in any of the live polling or lecture slides as a student, you know, just to understand, you know, how students would be experiencing our product, you could check that out. Um, followed by that, we'll have a, a brief summary and then uh, we'll discuss next steps and any questions that you might have. So some quick facts. Um, so who are we? Now, uh, we are a social impact startup. Um, uh, we, we started this company to democratize the cost of course you know, materials. Uh, my background is from Pearson. So I used to be the chief architect um, at Pearson. Um, I worked there for over a decade. I built a lot of LMS platforms, uh, a lot of the platforms that you're very well aware of, like the MyLabs uh, platform. Um, I also uh, worked for school before, uh, before I worked for higher ed. And I left um, Pearson to start this uh, initiative to you know, reduce student costs without compromising quality. Um, so what do we do? We actually build personalized courseware, um, homework solutions and classroom engagement tools, uh, but we are 100% aligned to open ed. Um, and I think that gives us a great flexibility in terms of uh, focusing more on formative assessment or formative content that helps student, students learn. And I think I'm preaching to the choir, especially in higher ed, a lot of students don't wanna read the textbook. So they focus on your lectures and hopefully notes and mostly on the homework that you give, especially on the STEM side. And if they do not know the answers, that's when the last resource is the textbook. 
and they'll even Google it, you know, before they try to read the textbook. Um, so we have come out with a complete integrated solution. We've taken the OpenStax text, uh, we have sliced and diced it by learning objectives, and then uh, we have added our own questions and activities and the whole, you know, and um, curated videos, uh, flashcards, and we've created a complete package so that you can kind of run your course. But then we realized that that's completely asynchronous, right? So we were missing out the biggest piece, which was the classroom engagement part. So in the last couple of years, uh, we've slowly started developing capabilities for also including classroom engagement on top of you know, the personalized courseware that we offer. So we are here today to talk about it. And in the future, um, you know, we'll talk about um, what we want to do. So by 2025, we'd like to pretty much cover all the 100 to 300 level courses. We already offer um, library models, uh, which is $80 per year for per seat. It's not per student. So we work with different uh, institutions on inclusive access programs um, or grant programs. And in, in fact, we are working uh, with the CUNY system as we speak on a virtual labs grant program. And a lot of our success is um, because of you guys, uh, the educators, um, we have created a lot of formative content by in partnership with uh, educators like yourself. Uh, next slide. So quick facts. Uh, every single course that we build is customized um, to your needs. So pedagogically, as well as you know, it's aligned to your syllabus. Uh, we already talked, I already talked about formative content. Um, we do not use any of the OpenStax banks. Uh, we build uh, question banks and activity banks. And uh, you know, we have an exhaustive bank aligned to pretty much every learning objective. And if that doesn't work, you can always build questions in our, uh, on our platform, including the live polling um, that I'll show you in a minute. You can um, pretty much integrate learner, just like you know, Pearson My Labs. You can integrate learner into most LMSs, uh, and uh, gradebook sync happens automatically. And the nice thing about our live polling platform, our live polling is even our live polling integrates uh, with your gradebook. So once your poll is done, the grades automatically sync back uh, into your LMS. So we recently started a two-week trial program that you're probably most familiar with, with other uh, platforms. Uh, so every student gets a two weeks trial at the beginning of the semester so that they can, you know, figure out about you know, the financial aid and stuff like that. Our customer su support is next to none. Um, we are available seven days a week, uh, the first six weeks of the semester and uh, six days a week once, you know, the traffic dies down. So we have excellent customer support and, uh, um, again, we get a lot of feedback and we are very receptive to feedback as well. And lastly, we have a learner give back program. So what we do is uh, not only do we obviously, you know, um, support the mission of OpenStax, but we earmark 5% of our revenue. We do work with a lot of um, colleges in different demographies uh, where um, there are students that are disadvantaged. So uh, we earmark that money so that we can give free access to such students. Uh, and a quick overview of Learner, it's probably only two slides I promise, and then we'll jump into live polling. Um, our textbook, we call it SMART because we use the OpenStax textbook. My apologies that I'm using anatomy and physiology as an example here. I know that you're coming from various you know, courses and various uh, uh, disciplines uh, and departments. Um, so we use, we have enhanced the OpenStax textbook, embedded uh, it with you know images that we could find or we could license, and we've also curated videos that are 508 compliant, activities that we've built, questions that we've built, terms and definitions, flashcard decks, and simulations. And um, students get to see all this supplemental content as they are studying the textbook. So essentially, we want to make sure that students have different modalities available as they're actually reading the book. And of course, uh, you know, we still recognize that most students don't read the textbook before they do stuff, but we have created the experience in such a way that if a student were to read the textbook, um, they have all the necessary 
supplemental resources available at their fingertips so that they don't have to go to Google or you know, Quizlet or whatever, try to find these resources. So assessment content, um, wherever possible, we make sure that 70% of our questions are at a higher level of blooms because we wanna induce critical thinking. We don't wanna just have fact-based questions because that's not gonna help a student in the long term. Uh, we have multiple question banks for our premium courses to manage academic integrity. We, we monitor Chegg and Quizlet and all the other um, outlets there where you can find answers. And we refresh our questions. Uh, whenever we find such questions, we refresh them with new questions. Um, and 99% of our questions have wrong answer feedback. And you know, we're not here to talk about our assessment in detail, but if you're interested in the homework solution, uh, we could talk to you later. Um, assignments, again, you can build homework on our platform. You can actually give tests. It's like a mini respondus. You can customize quizzes and activities. You can build templates, assignment templates that you can share with other instructors and collaborate. All of our assignments or submissions are automated. And for Canvas, especially those who are using Canvas as your LMS, you can also deep link all of our assignments and also live polls that uh, get hot linked into Canvas. So finally, let's, uh, uh, okay, 1016, let's talk a little bit about live polling. It's not something new to you guys. You might have used iClicker in the past, uh, you know, 20 years ago, you know, you used to have like little um, remotes where you can click on stuff. Um, so, or, you know, people raising their hands, but the problem is then you, um, you basically don't have people participate like introverts. They don't participate in such programs, uh, such live polling events. Um, but live polling in general with tools nowadays actually enables you guys to engage with students uh, with interactive quizzes. You can assess your students' uh, efficacy gaps in real time, uh, either through your live quizzes and also you have various activity types to pick from. Uh, we have uh, quite a few and we are building a lot more. And you also can do this um, with interactive lecture slides. Um, you know, there's been a lot of platforms like Tegrity, Echo 360 in the past and Top Hat um, that have always been um, useful in terms of recording your slides or uploading your lecture slides. And, uh, and they've gotten a lot better, right? Uh, you can embed activities within your lecture slides and then make your lecture sessions also pretty interactive. So traditionally, what is the use? You know, what's the use of live polling? Right? Uh, the biggest use is really student engagement, especially you know, during COVID, your hybrid classes, your online classes, uh, you have absolutely no clue whether the student is staring at the screen and, you know, and completely lost or they're doing their own thing. Um, sometimes they'll just join a Zoom meeting, but you have no clue again. Uh, there's a lot of instructors that uh, mandate that everybody needs to be on video, but that doesn't mean that they're not looking at Instagram, but they're you know, looking at you. So it does um, increase student engagement by using polling. You can definitely understand your, your class's progress as you're going on with your lecture. Uh, you could address learning gaps in pretty much real time. So somebody asked me, you know, what's the benefit? Um, it's better to kind of um, check on student progress and student efficacy real time than after the fact, right? After a week, they're already a week behind. Now they have to catch up. And um, definitely increase student, uh, you know, collaboration. So you could also create groups uh, of students and say, hey, you know, you work on this problem and then um, answer the question. Um, you know, you can, you can implement many different ways of cognitivism. So it really depends on um, what type of classroom, um, you know, what, what kind of classroom, is it a flipped classroom or is it a traditional lecture session? Uh, there's lots of strategies that you can, you can apply. And finally, uh, you can use live polling for simple attendance. I've seen a lot of faculty um, use polling simply for attendance, you know? So some of the strategies that you can um, um, implement to engage your students a lot more is just rewarding participation, right? Um, a lot of these tools um, that you're already familiar with, 
do allow you to give participation points. And you can, that is a really good way of making people focus. But then if you give them an additional carrot of efficacy, now you're making students also pay attention, you know, not just participate and give whatever they want. And you need to make it a little more anonymized because a lot of students are pretty, you know, um, they're not they're not sure of what answers uh, what's the correct answer and uh, there's a lot of peer pressure especially in school and uh, if you anonymize it um, nobody will know so essentially uh, you know a lot of platforms allow you to do that including learner and when you prepare for your lecture session especially the ones that you know if you try to embed activities or questions into your lecture slides I would suggest that you use helper slides. You could have it at the end, or you could have it immediately after the topic, along with um, some more bonus activities, uh, and also you know whiteboarding. Right? You can do an interactive whiteboard and uh, start explaining certain concepts. So um, there's quite a few strategies um, that you can apply, but we've seen time and time again that. Instructors uh, 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 that instructors that actually use uh, participation points and efficacy-based points um, have always seen the efficacy improve. You know, in terms of uh, homework, midterm, and final exam results, and and uh, overall student learning. Um, this is just a, a shameless uh, slide of all the courses and pricing that we have. Uh, all of our courses are anywhere from 20 to $40. And some of them are actually 15 bucks uh, for some of the basic courses. Um, and with every single course, you have the same capabilities. Uh, it, the pricing changes uh, because of the effort that we've put in to build formative content. So, and, um, and uh, um, every single course comes with live polling, the ability to um, create assignments of your own, and obviously the entire LMS integration. So uh, all of that is part of the package. No institution ever pays anything over and above uh, what the student pays. And for all of you that have, are attending today, uh, again, for the summer semester, uh, we are giving a free pilot, especially for uh, folks who are not our customers, have not used Learner before. Uh, we're giving you a free pilot to use Learner uh, to try it out and uh, see if you like it. If you like it, yeah, you can adopt. If you don't like it, please give us feedback on you know how we can improve more. Everything that we do, uh, you know, is uh, we kind of uh, focus on ADA compliance, and uh, you know everything that we have on our platform is HTML5 based, uh, which by definition is ADA compliant. Um, there are obviously image based activities and 3D activities that don't have uh, specific. Uh, compliances. And that's because if it's an identification based activity where you have to look at an image and then identify, then obviously, if you explain the image, you're giving away the answer. So such activities are not going to be ADA compliant. So time for a brief demo. Um, awesome. So let me just uh, end this. open up a brief demo. So uh, I'm going into the anatomy and physiology uh, course here. So typically when you log in from your LMS, you'll get a whole bunch of courses you're teaching. Uh, these are not titles, right? These are not the OpenStax titles. This, this would be like your biology 280 course or something like that, right? So you'd get in there uh, into Learner. So Imagine that you click from Canvas or Blackboard or Desire to Learn or Moodle, and you came in. And uh, once you come in here, you can build your assignments. This is your smart textbook, but let's focus on live polling. So live polling is just says live. Right? So when you click on that, we get to this menu. So there's two things you can do here. Um, you can build live polls, just quizzes, and you can also upload lecture slides. Okay, uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward, quizzes and upload slides. And eventually we'll have a whole bunch of other uh, types of um, tasks or activities you could do here. All right, so in quizzes, 
Um, let me just edit a quiz real quick. Um, you can add multiple activity types, uh, short answer, which is actually being replaced by fill in the blank type of activity. You can add a whiteboard. You could insert a whiteboard even during a poll. You can have a sorting, matching, and diagram activity. And again, each of these activities have sub activities within it. So you can have a diagram and a diagram which has a fill in the blank at different areas or a diagram which has a drop down or a diagram which where you create a hotspot and you can click on target. So there's many ways that you can uh, work with diagram based activities. The same is true with most of these activities. These are, think about this as a, as a super, you know, uh, a bigger activity where it has a lot of different variations in those activity types. Okay. And we'll show that to you as we are doing this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a live poll. Um, Venkat, correct me if I'm wrong. Am I using the OER learner 2022? That's right. Yeah. Okay. And notice that you can also require a password. I'm not going to do that today because I don't want you guys to spend or waste a lot of time doing that. And uh, we'll just start this poll and we'll see how this goes, okay? Um, now, every one of you should have received an email with a link in it. And when you click on that link, uh, what's gonna happen is, let me just close this guy real quick. And I'm just simulating a student view here. So all you do is you go into anatomy and physiology. So once you log in, you go into anatomy and physiology, and then you simply go to assignments. As a student, you'll click on assignments. So for students, everything that they do on Learner starts at assignments. So you click on assignments, and if you see, let's do a poll, um, that's what you need. So for me, I'm gonna log out and log in as a different student. And Venkat, I think uh, you gave me a different student. Uh, let me just see. So I just go into anatomy and physiology. You can do this on your mobile device. You can do this on your desktop, doesn't matter. And you'll find assignments. You click on assignments. And I have not started anything yet. So let me just, this is, I select my class section and I simply say start. So at this point, you should be able to start joining the beam uh, and see how many students are attending this. And you'll see this, it says, let's do a poll. I click on join. And it should say, that I'm waiting for the instructor to join, right? So please hold for your instructor to start. So I'll give it um, just a minute. I see that the number of attendees are, or the number of simulated students are increasing. Um, so again, it would be great if you guys participate because it's a first-hand demonstration of, you know, how this would look like for your students. And I don't even need to share my screen at this point um, uh, but I'll do that for the live, uh, the lecture slides demo and how you can, you could actually see what I'm doing. Uh, you don't even have to share your zoom screen or whatever. Right. Um, you know, and, um, uh, students will still be able to see your lecture slides. All right. I'll give it a little, little more time. And if anybody has any issues, please uh, please text us and uh, we will be able to help you out with your with the login. Okay, that's a pretty decent size, I guess. Let me start the beam and uh, and feel free to join anytime uh, while I'm presenting this. Um, so a simple question, again, there's no wrong answer here. What courses do you teach?
And on the top, um, it, it will show me how many students have responded. That's my response. And when I close it automatically, you know, you control the whole experience. So um, if students have not responded, they don't get to, they don't get to respond. You can always open it back up for them. Um, we also have time responses. So you could set, set this up and time it and the whole nine yards. So then let's click on review for now. And we see that a whole bunch of folks have responded. Um, let's, so this is a short answer type of question. And none of these questions have wrong answers at this point, uh, because I'm just trying to introduce you to this. And then the next lecture slides, we'll have some wrong answers and we'll show you how that works. Okay. And again, and I see 62 participants, so please uh, feel free to join the poll. Um, and if you ha are having technical difficulties, please let us know and uh, we'll help you out. It's always good to participate um, just to understand how this whole thing works. All right, so I'm closing this. I can review and I'll see the responses and the number of students that have given the responses. So again, another way to figure out um, if you, most of your students are not, you know, obviously in the bucket that you want them to be, and then you can then focus a little more on remediation. So again, a multiple choice question. And this question is a multi-select. So you can actually select multiple items here. And while folks are doing that, I also want to show you that I can always move, you know, um, I can navigate between different questions without, I can skip a question if I want to. I could also add a whiteboard, you know, start drawing stuff. And we'll talk a little more about the whiteboard and our future plans of the whiteboard uh, in, a, in a minute. All right, so I'm going to close this. Thank you for your responses. And then again, another question. Again, it's just to collect some data from you guys on what you guys use and uh, you know the challenges that you face. Okay. And I think that was a, and this is the last one. I'm gonna throttle this a little bit, make it smaller. And you'll see that you know as people are dropping out or coming back in, you can see all of those. And finally, let me just click on review. And once I'm done with that and click on finish, 
uh, I could submit your grades automatically. So what happens now is when you, um, there's two ways, right? One, you can exit the poll and come back. Let's say the poll is not complete and it's a two, you know, it's a, it's a two session lecture and you just want to continue the same poll. You can do so. You don't have to finish the submit, but you will definitely see some great points uh, here. This is purely for participation. So now um, let's do something a little more interesting because this was um, just to show you, um, you know, how polling works uh, to get your feet wet a bit. So these are all the different lecture slides that we have uploaded. Uh, again, in this case, we have about two to three examples. Uh, one thing about cardiac cycle, which is more very uh, A&P based. Uh, we have some psychology um, example as well as a math example. Uh, let me just first show you, once you upload uh, slides, you know, you just say upload slides, you can pick your slide, you know, it could be a, a PDF or a, or a PowerPoint slide. And once it's ready, uh, it'll notify you. So, and once the slides are created, you can literally insert items between the lecture slides. Okay. So I can click on each of these lecture slides to see what the slides are. These are all, you know, obviously open stack slides. Um, and uh, you can create activities like this, where you're creating a hotspot, and um, you will be, you know, you'll you'll be able to create this activity either as a click on target or matching or fill in the blank or drag and drop. So, like I said, for image based activities, even though it says diagram activity, you can manifest it in whatever way you want. Okay. And if I want to, you can also use the prompt function. Um, so let us say you want your students to, you know, take this activity in one of these formats, but you want to decide it real time, you can, that will prompt you as to what, what you need that to be in. So for now, we'll not prompt it. And you can also add a timer. I know some of, uh, some of this is probably alien to you. So I'm just going to show this to you. It doesn't mean, you know, you can randomly select whatever you want and we'll see how this whole thing works. Um, we have one more activity like blood flow of the heart. And uh, technically you can actually create a diagram activity where um, instead of it being uh, text-based like this, you are creating fill in the blanks or you know uh, use, using the diagram where students can either drag and drop or uh, you could use uh, them to simply type the responses uh, based on a previous slide like this one. So I'm, we can just remove this and then use that uh, blank area to create a diagram based activity. Okay. All right. So. Let's start from the beginning. Um, do you guys have, um, so I can, I can answer a few questions before I go on with this. Um, is there any specific questions that you might have? Let me just go to the chat. And Anna or Venkat, you guys can tell me if there's any question. Okay, can your platform be linked to Canvas and used via Canvas? Yes, um, we can. Um, yeah, we have, Frank, uh, your question is, you know, can you see as a professor, I think during the class, uh, we wanted to be anonymous, but yeah, after the, you know, after your submission is over, you could, you could actually see who got what, you know, who answered what questions and so on. We are also building that capability um, to do it in real time, but you need to be careful because if you're sharing your screen, you know, you don't want all students to see who's responded what. So. There's a couple of things that so um, so Frank, you cannot build interactive slides on learner. You can only upload the slides and then you can embed activities within the slides. We are working on integration with uh, 
Google Slides, you know, whatever I'm using. Um, so essentially, you know, we'll be using their APIs to point to the Google Slides that you might have already created. Uh, we're also work, you know, looking at Office 365, just like other platforms did, uh, where you can, again, uh, upload your PP PowerPoint, and then um, we just create images of that PowerPoint and, and show it to you here. And then you can embed the activities in between the slides. And once that is done, let's say you want to modify the PowerPoint, right? Uh, we'll have a little button where you can go ahead and modify the it in Office 365 or Google Slides. I mean, version one would be Google Slides. And then we're also going to look at how we can do that from Office 365. And you cannot export this and have the embedded activity because the activity will only work in, in on the platform, right? Oh, absolutely. For recording attendance, um, well, at the end of the poll, you know, uh, you will be able to see what students, um, you know, um, attended, right? Because they all get a great point. <laughs> it could be zero, but it's still a great point. So, all right. So let's quickly start um, this poll. And again, the same way, I'm just going to click on Beam. I use Beam because it's the, you know, I love Star Trek, you know, beaming away. So that's pretty much what I, <laughs> we came up with. Um, and that's what, I, that's what we're using, you know. Beam the slides to your students' devices. So let's start and hopefully you guys can participate. And you see where it says passcode required. Um, you could technically use that for passcode. So same thing, go back to your assignments and um, you'll be able to see a little join button. Let's check some interactive slides. And this is going to be a little more fun because it's not going to be as lame as the previous one. Um, but again, uh, it's very subject specific. So I hope you like it. So I will start the beam. And as you can see, every single lecture slide you know, shows up this way. You can obviously maximize it, all the good stuff. Uh, the nice thing here is uh, you could also annotate. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's uh, Smiley to OpenStax. All right, so you can navigate through the slides or you can also add a whiteboard and we'll add a whiteboard eventually. So the next question, uh, this is actually a click on target activity. And the way you work on this is click on the part where the electrical impulse is converted into a chemical signal in the neuron. I don't expect you guys to know the answer to this unless you're an expert at AMP and I'll click somewhere here and I'll submit my response. And as you can see on the top, there's a timer that's going on and I could increase the time if I wanted to, just to give students a little more time or I can simply close it if I think that you know everybody has responded. So if I get all 22, I could simply say closed. I could always reopen, I'll review. And it shows me all the pins that have been dropped everywhere. So you can literally see that. And finally, I'll click on the answer and hopefully you get some fireworks. Okay. All right, let's go to the next slide or the next question. Um, I'm going to skip this question for now. 
And if people are participating, that's great. But again, it's very similar to what we did in the past. But again, this has a correct answer. And you can also read more, read less. Um, I'll have an incorrect response this time on purpose. And let me close this. Let me review the answer responses. And then I click on the answer. And when I do that, I mean, some of you might get missing in action as well as a response, which is obvious. You did not participate, so you won't get a participation point. So that's really um, some of the activities and how you actually put lecture slides in between. Um, let me go to the slide again, if I can. And you can also do fill in the blanks in line like this. So I could literally type the responses at the bottom for all these. Uh, so again, there's many activity types and, uh, and you can uh, obviously take advantage of these types of questions as well. And of course, for your subjects. And finally, let me just go uh, quickly to the to the very end of these slides to showcase something that I always have, which is um, OCD, right? Um, uh, something that uh, we all struggle with. I enjoy it actually. Um, so this is a whiteboard activity and you know, you can pretty much do what all of the platforms can do, right? And then, you know, you can do whatever the heck you want. So uh, at the end of the day, the goal here is that, let's say a student is struggling or they're not able to understand something and you wanna basically, um, you have a, a, a tablet where you can actually have a pencil that you can start writing on. This is a fantastic way of doing it. Okay. And then after that, let me just go to the next one. So this talks about OCD. And then again, you have a couple of questions on this. We also do support numerical responses with you know, variances and stuff. So um, there are questions, there are gonna be questions out here. You just need to find them. This is a click on target, there's a short answer. Okay, there you go. So this is a, a question where uh, you should be able to uh, respond with the numeric value. And um, one of the nice things about short answer questions in, on a platform is that if let us say that there, it's a, so there's a couple of things, right? One is that we have an algorithm running behind the scenes that captures 95% accuracy of a, an, of a typo. So if your students have actually typed the wrong answer, well, they've typed a typo, it'll try to, um, it'll try to correct it. Like, you know, it'll tell them that, okay, I accept this. This is an acceptable answer, right? You can also include acceptable answers or responses in your, um, in your questions. So let's just review. And 50 is the correct answer. So let's say I want to also add 60 as a correct answer. Whoever basically gave this, I'll include that as a correct answer. As a matter of fact, I'll give a whole bunch of them as correct answers. So um, by doing this automatically, what happens is that um, a frowny face becomes a smiley face. I still added 1.2. So um, does that make sense? So it kind of, you can use this capability to also accept answers real time if you think that there's clo that's close enough. So now let's assume that this is um, a two session course or a two session lecture. You can simply come out of it. And for your students, it says activity paused and they can exit, okay? And then they can rejoin later. Let's say the next, next week you come back, you beam it again. You click on the same slide deck and say resume and you'll resume your beam. And when that happens, 
Um, and I'm going to rejoin as a student. And finally, I'm going to finish. I'll submit. And that's when the score gets recorded. And when, once the score is recorded, this uh, gets transferred to your gradebook. Okay. So it also shows up as assignments in your assignment reports. But the goal here is that you, all of your assign, uh, all of your live polling or interactive lecture slides uh, shows up here in your. Let's check some interactive slides, right? And let's do a poll. And you can also look at the reports here of all what your students did. So I think Frank, you were asking me about, you know, how do you actually check this? So um, you get to see all of your students and, you know, whether they've submitted the poll and stuff like that. So, okay. Um, now let's actually go back. I'm gonna go back to this real quick. So let's summarize, you know, you can build custom courses on our platform. You can build live polls with interactive slides. You can assign quizzes and activities. Uh, everything gets integrated into your LMS with Gradebook Sync. Uh, students get a two week trial in the beginning of the semester. And uh, we have fantastic support and uh, we do have a learner give back program. So our roadmap, uh, which is very interesting because we are heavily investing in classroom engagement. Um, in, a, in the next, um, you know, probably by the, by the fall semester, you should be able to also include a learner activity. So you should be able to search uh, for activities that are already created by us, you know, the activities that we already provide as part of your homework, and you should be able to use them in creating a live poll or in creating, you know, your interactive lecture slides. So you don't have to do a lot of work. Um, we also would have prepackaged a lot of the OpenStack slides. If you want it, we can enable them and they'll already be present. And then you can obviously delete whatever you don't want. Uh, so that again, it's, it's, if you're already using OpenStack lecture slides, one less thing for you to do. We are working on an interactive whiteboard um, with, which will have gamification. It will have discussion rooms. Um, and we'll also be working on uh, formula based questions. So you can have math-based responses or scientific-based responses. We already have that with our math platform, but we don't have that in the live polling. So we are trying to merge the two things together. So having said that, um, we have fantastic testimonials. We'll, um, uh, we can give you references if you need. And uh, this is the hero's journey. Um, you can schedule a demo with us. We give you, give you a demo for 30 to 60 minutes. Then we'll give you a demo account that you can test drive. Typically it takes one to two hours for you to drive test drive. We'll give you calendar time, whatever time you need. Um, and then if you want to adopt learner, we will set up um, the course the way you want it. And then we'll onboard you, it takes 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, we'll work behind the scenes with your learner, you know, your admin, IT admin, LMS admins. And then um, uh, you'll be ready. So it doesn't take a lot of time to onboard you. And we hope that you at least will try out our free pilot in summer and try to see if this thing works for you. And uh, please come and talk to us if you need any other help. And finally, thank you so much. Uh, we'd love to meet. You can always, um, if you want to schedule a personalized demo, use learnfast.com. It's L-R-N-F-A-S-T.com slash demo. Or you can use this number to call Clifton or send us an email on adopt at L-R-N-F-A-S-T.com. Um, we could not, uh, we did not, you know, the vowels cost us too much. If we had a L-E-A-R-N-F-A-S-T, -E that would cost us like $300,000. So we didn't want to waste that money. So we have a short form. Um, so having said that, if anybody has any questions, I'd love to answer. And we have like five minutes, but yeah, we can stay for a little longer if need be. So uh, Venkat or Clifton, are there any specific questions that I need to respond to? I think it's uh, it, it got addressed on the chat 
I think some questions related to features like sharing a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And then a few questions on signing up for the pilot. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, if, if anybody else, is this available for all OpenStax techs? Um, the basic courses are, uh, again, um, please talk to us because uh, whatever is not shown on the screen, um, which is, let me just share my screen again. So we have these courses available. Let me just uh, share my slides. Um, okay. So we have all these courses and these are all coming soon, uh, but we are also going to be um, exposing live polling as its own separate product, especially if you're not, if you don't have anything any courses that you know we don't have any courses that you teach and you still want to use our assignment capability or the live polling capability um, and that will be very minimal minimally priced it's probably going to be like ten dollars or something for the for the term so uh, we want to make it super cheap um, based on how much value we provide to you and your students uh, obviously anything else So this is learnfast.com. Uh, let me just see. You're saying that you're getting a page not found. Let's see. Oh, okay. Give me one second. That is weird. Schedule a demo. Let me just put this, um, if that thing is not working, uh, let's just put this on Zoom. Please use this link. There you go, Anna's already tried that. Thank you, Anna. All right, so, Thank you so much. Again, if you have, we'll reach out to each of you um, if you need uh, further information or um, want to do a dry run yourself. Uh, but thank you so much for joining this webinar. And uh, again, please reach out to us if you have any further questions or if you, uh, if you have spe specific needs that we did not address during this call, um, we'd be more than happy to talk to you and learn more. Again, thank you. Uh, for coming and joining this uh, this meeting and this webinar. Thank you all so much. And thank you, Learner, for collaborating on such an informative and engaging webinar. I know I really enjoyed it, and I'm sure all of our attendees did as well. Hey, thank you, Lindsay, as always. Uh, you've been fantastic. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone.